don't really know much about Halloween. Halloween. The barriers would be down between the real and the unreal. And the dead might be looking in. The last great one took place 3,000 years ago when the hills ran red. Halloween. You happen to know anything about this Cochrane? All I can tell you, mister, is watch out. Season. He's watching you, friend, I guarantee you that. Hey, Mr. Cochran, just what is the final process? That was, I was just thinking. Witchcraft. To us, it was a way of controlling our environment. Hey! Where are they taking her? They're taking her to the factory. I want a mask. Can I have a mask? Uh, just what I had in mind for you, little buddy. Why, Cochran? Why? Do I need a reason? I've got nothing here to indicate there was ever a body at all. Operator, this is an emergency. <laughs> I do love a good joke, and this is the best ever. The joke of the children. I'm glad you'll be able to watch it. You've got to believe me. That's going to kill us. All of us. The world's going to change tonight, Doctor. Happy Halloween. Stop it! Halloween 3, season of the witch, the night no one comes home. Now, this is directed by Tommy Lee Wallace, about a large Halloween mask-making company named Silver Shamrock, who have evil plans to kill millions of children with a uh, sinister Halloween mask commercial on Halloween night. Now, uh, I, I tell you what, a lot of people want to hate on this goop, but this is probably one of my probably my third favorite Halloween film. Yeah, I, I, I love this thing. I love it too, but you know, I, a lot of people wish that it was you know titled something different. You know, well, yeah, I mean, Season of the Witch would have probably went over much better. Yeah. They just called it Season of the Witch. I know a lot of people just look at it as Season of the Witch, but, you know, if you can get past the fact that it's Halloween and it ain't got nothing to do with Michael Myers, I mean, you got people like Tom Atkins and stuff here. Mm-hmm. And I think it's, I love that. I know it's, it's pretty much like it's an 80s film through and through with the way it is. I mean, you got this guy running for his life at the start of it, and he makes it to the hospital, and then he gets his eyeballs plucked out, you know. <laughs> and, of course, when he's there, he runs into the good doctor, which is, of course, uh, Tom Atkins' character, which leads into his daughter coming and then them two teaming up. And Tom's character is, is a bit on, on a, you know, I don't know. He's, he's going through some issues. He's obviously having issues with the, uh, I guess, former marital partner here. That's his ex-wife, I do believe, right? Mm-hmm. And, of course, his kids and all this stuff is going on. But they decide they're going to go venture out and figure out just what was so bad that the dad was running off with one of the masks clutched to him. And... You know, it does have some things that maybe don't fly right that's completely illogical. Like, we don't really... Do we really know why Silver Shamrock and them want to kill these kids? Do we know why? I mean, I, I think they just want to do it. You know, yeah, they, they want to do it. it was a, I'm, I'm trying to go back. I don't think there's a clear... I think he just wants to do some evil stuff. Yeah. It's like, I want to kill a bunch of kids, and I don't really have a reason to do it, but we'll get the piece of Stonehenge in here, and we'll just do it. I mean, we'll gangster, man. That's gangster. <laughs> and, of course, along the way, Mr. Atkins here develops some romantic feelings for this young girl, which leads to uh, romance moments for them. And, of course, while all the while this is going on, you got the Silver Shamrock people doing their evil deeds, and they've got their little robot guards, and there's some good gore moments. It's a pretty cool concept. you got to think, even if it's not necessarily explained exactly why it's going down, it's a pretty cool concept. Uh, there is some odd moments of this movie. Like I, I don't want to jump ahead of anything here, Goob, especially if you want to add to what I'm saying. But, oh, you got it. You know, the, the old man, for some reason, like when they have a chance later in the film to do in with Tom's character here, mm. they, they instead he does the classic villain thing. He, he describes his whole plan perfectly to him yeah exactly what he wants to do he ties him up oh well let's hope that works okay i mean that's like the classic supervillain thing okay i've got somebody here and i'm just going to explain my whole plan to him and i'm going to leave him in this room where surely they're not going to escape yeah 
And, uh, of course, that happens. And, of course, then there is the random person turning to a cyborg, which is kind of random. Mm-hmm. But, man, I, I had a lot of fun with this. I mean, do you feel the same way about it? Yeah. Um, but, like, the, the the robot aspect of it, you know, it, it kind of takes me out just a little bit. But, uh, mm-hmm. I, mean, I mean, hell, it's Halloween. You know, they're talking strictly Halloween and greatest time of the year. But, uh the song. I love the song. Oh, yeah. God, that's so awesome. They should air that, like, every year around Halloween. They yeah. should air that just just to air it. Like, one of them networks should air that. And they should put the mask on sale. That'd be cool, wouldn't it? Yeah, man, I don't understand. Like, I know it's totally off subject, but... Well, hell no, because we're talking about Halloween. Mm-hmm. I wished... That they would bring back all that, the, the the Halloween commercials that I grew up with. I wish they'd bring that shit back for kids. Because, man, like, I feel Halloween don't get the respect that it needs. Because, like, do you remember the Chicken McNugget commercials? Oh, like, yeah, man. God! And they had the toys. Oh, and, yeah. And hey, the, the, little, the little McDonald's Halloween buckets you'd get. Yeah. Yeah. I actually, like, a couple years ago... They had a version of a Halloween bucket back at McDonald's. It wasn't the witch or the pumpkin or the ghost. It was just a bucket with Mr. Potato Head dressed up as a Halloween stuff on it. Oh, and yeah. I went ahead, man, I ordered me a Happy Meal just to have the bucket. <laughs> but I really wished it would have been like the old school stuff. Because, you know, oddly enough, the, the old buckets almost match the same theme for the three masks that they wear in this movie. Yeah. You ever thought of that? No, it didn't, but now it makes total sense. McDonald's is going to kill us all. That's what it is. That's a, <laughs> They're waiting to do a giveaway. That's what it is. <laughs> if I was ahead of McDonald's, I would like, do, I'd do that because like, all the Halloween people would get it, but none of the new people would. I'd run that little, little catchy commercial, but just with a McDonald's twist on it and tell the kids to be sure to have their, their buckets ready for the big giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but... Dude, you know, like, Tom Atkins don't get enough credit either, I don't think. No. I mean, like, it's this, and there's Night of the Creeps, and I'm sure he did a bunch of other stuff. I think he was he's in Maniac Cop. Huh? He's in The Fog. He's a he's a pimp in every movie that he's in. I know. And he always gets sexy time. <laughs> with, with people that looks like they're, like, half his age, too. Yeah. But now, you know, without spoiling it, though, the little the little part here, the scene where somebody turns into a cyborg. I know a lot of times we spoil stuff, but we'll just, we'll spare it this time. But, you know, there's there's the, somebody turns to a robot out of the blue. Yeah. Did that ever make much sense to you? I mean, I guess now it kind of does when you think about it, they had time to do it. But it just seems so random. Yeah, the, well, I'm trying to figure out how I can explain it without giving away because I know, I know we have spoiled movies before, but these movies, like all three of these movies that we are reviewing, I do feel like people who haven't seen them need to see these, and I don't want to ruin it for them. Mm-hmm. But the, yeah, the Cyborg, I mean, it, it was a little from, you know, a little out of the way, but there, there was definitely time for the bad guys to do that. Yeah. Like, they, they definitely had a time, because... Uh, you know, Tom was in a, a separate room. That is true, yeah. There, there was time to do it. It just, yeah. I know a lot of people's like, oh, how did that happen? But yeah. there was time. And But, man, I mean, it's, <laughs> the movie isn't perfect. Like, we're not saying it's perfect. Like, when, when, when he does what he does to fight the bad guys at the end, that looks pretty far-fetched, too. Mm-hmm. But it works. Well, um, like you said, the cyborg, that's, that's one of the best scenes in the movie. I mean, you know, like, yeah. uh, effects-wise. Mm-hmm. And, you know, of course, I think this probably has one of the... I don't know. It ain't. I, it probably ain't meant to be funny. But I think it's probably one of the most humorous endings to a movie you're going to find out there. <laughs> I mean, I think that's, like, classic. Most people know about that scene if they don't know about anything. But I, is that not probably, like, maybe one of the perfect ways to end something like this? Yeah. It, <laughs> like, whenever I did say it... Like I really don't know what age I was, but I mean I was, I was fairly young. I don't want to say I watched it when I was, I, I was probably give or take fourteen through eighteen. Mm-hmm. It's like a little wide, wide span. Uh, 
But yeah, like when I when I first saw it, I was like, I was like, oh okay, oh no, <laughs> okay, mm-hmm. and I was like, like I don't know, it's, it's like one of those endings like I never really seen before, you know? Yeah. Well, besides uh, Empire Strikes Back. Mm-hmm. So- <laughs> you know man it's like it's one of those when you're a kid you're probably like oh no you know what i mean because there's no resolution really i mean you don't really know how it goes one way or the other if it goes the way it looks then i guess yeah. they'd have to call uh somebody for a lot of exotic animals the next the next day <laughs> but i mean really it I, what gets really accomplished though i mean i'm sure not every kid in the world had one of those masks i don't know but man it, it's it's 80s, you know? I mean, that's the best way to describe it. It's good 80s stuff, but this is a movie that a lot of hardcore Halloween fans want to avoid, man. They don't they don't like it for some reason. I guess because it just don't have Michael Myers in it. Yeah. But now, in my household, this movie for some reason, I guess maybe people in my family were, were kind of like those regular other Michael Myers fans. This film was avoided like the plague when it came to rent movies. <laughs> this was the last movie I ever seen of Halloween. Like I seen everything but this, and I finally had to just go out of my way and get this myself when I actually did get to see it. Right. Well, that that like I said, I was I started collecting, you know, give or take, but that little wide span that I said. Uh, but then I, when DVD started coming out, I think I was already out of high school. We always have this conversation. Mm-hmm. We always have this conversation. Before <laughs> come out, uh, but yeah, like like I was real obsessed with Michael Myers first, and um, you know, of course, I went for the ones that uh, that I I loved growing up with. So of course, I got you know one and two. And I bought four, five, and six, and fuck my face for getting seven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did, did you regret that purchase? Yeah, seven and eight. Oh yeah, so, I think most people did. But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, like I was looking at DVD collection, and I was like, shit, I got to get three. Yeah, uh, when I finally bought three, I got it. It's in the bargain bin at Walmart right now, and uh, they got like two and three separate in the bargain bin. Right. But when I got two and three, it was together in the bargain bin. It's like when them combo packs. Oh, so that's how I got it. But I do think that I've heard rumblings that there's going to be a Blu-ray release maybe this year. They may have been holding out for whenever they actually make part three to the uh, to the remakes, you know. Yeah. But I don't know. I know it's on. It's you know it's it's in the works, and I'll probably pick it up because I I don't know why. Sometimes I have to buy stuff I've already got. I just can't help myself. Mm. But uh, yeah. So what's your what's your score total for this one? Then? I gave it an eight. Hey. Uh, yeah, because. I do enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm almost there with you. I gave it a seven and a half. That's so, good so we're, we're almost on the same page with it. I, no, no, I can't prove it. You've got to believe me. Believe me. Take it off the air now, please. You've got to at least... Due to Tuesday interruption, we're having technical problems. Please stand by. It's time. It's time. We are experiencing technical difficulties. Please stand by. Dark masks. Gather round your TV set. Put on your masks and watch. All witches, all skeletons, all jack o' lanterns. The third Gather commercial. It's still on. Please. Watch. Take off the third channel. The third channel. It's still running. Stop it, please. For God's sake, please stop it. There's no more time. You've got to. Please stop it. Stop it now. Turn it off. Turn it off. Stop it. Stop it! 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 Stop it!